Okay, friends, this is the video that you guys wait all year for. I am going to make all of my Christmas gifts. And if you missed my last video, I announced that I have moved. So in this video, this is my first video I'm ever creating in my new home. And if it seems a little echoey, it's because I'm literally in an empty craft room. And in order to do all of these crafts, I am going to have to pull things out of boxes. I am not unpacked, but in the weeks ahead, you'll see me unpack and get this craft room finally set up. But I didn't wanna miss this video. I know you wait all year for it. So let's get into it. Let's make all of the Christmas gifts and let's get you inspired along the way. So first things first, I am going to make a teacher gift. I have used this little tote bag before. This is from Hobby Lobby, and I kept the little tag just so that you could see. Very affordable, but also it's so cute. I love that it has this little fabric, little pocket pouch right in the front, but then it's a really nice little burlap bag, and it's super sturdy. I love this. Okay, so I used some Smart Iron On, and I am going to get this all weeded out. And I'm going to trim off any extra, that way I can reuse that. And let's go ahead and get this all weeded. Now I have used this particular design before, and as a reminder, everything that you see me use to bring all of these gifts together will be linked down below in the description box. So if you wanna know any of the designs that I'm using, any of the tools that I'm using, I get asked repeatedly about these little craft caddies and tool caddies. Those are also linked down below. So check out that list. It's full of all of the sources and you'll be all set. Okay, I love this SVG and that is another perk to having SVGs is that you can reuse them and reuse them and reuse them. So I'm going to reuse this one. So this says best teacher ever. Now, again, I am going to be using an iron on. So I went ahead and mirrored my image and I also made sure to place my material shiny side down on the mat. Now, if you are brand new to iron on, I have so many introductory videos for beginners on how to do it. So if you need a little help learning how to get everything prepped in design space and on your mat, I'll link a video down below for you so you can get a little extra help. But in this video, we are going super fast. We are simply going to create and get inspired. I have so many gifts to do. And like I said, I have, I'm gonna have to go through little boxes along the way in this video to just find the supplies that I need. And you know what, I need to pause weeding this design because I need to get my heat press all set. Now, if you've noticed in my videos lately, I have been using my easy presses and not my big pink heat press. And that's only because it's been packed away and on a moving truck. So now it is here, it's on the floor, but not set up. I love these little easy presses. I do love my pink heat press just a tad more just because it is always set up, always ready, and it makes for really quick crafting. But like I said, everything is just a little bit chaotic in here. So grabbed my little easy press out of the box and we are ready to go. Okay, so now I can bring in my little heat pad. I did make this, so if you want to know how to make a little heat pad of your own, then I'll place a link for you. Okay, now if I remember correctly, this has Oh, it's not as, maybe they kind of changed it. Some of them have like a more plasticky liner inside. And so you might want to just be mindful of that when using the heat. But I'm going to add a little bit of heat to just get us started. Make sure there's no moisture in there. There we go. And let's grab our little SVG. Oh, isn't that pretty? And I did decide to do this in a navy. I think navy is just so classy. And I think that looks so nice. Okay, so I am going to do that. Let's make sure that that's lined up nice. Just about there. And you know what I'll do is I'm going to bring out these sides so that I can press this really flat. And I'm gonna do it one at a time. 
just like this. Okay, so I have my press set to, let's see, put that on there, 315 for 30 seconds. Let's go ahead and get that started. Okay, so we're gonna let that count down. I'm gonna give that some good pressure and then I'll go ahead and just do the second half. Now I pulled out, I don't know if that they make this size anymore. I pulled out the little six by seven for the projects that I'm doing for Christmas. I, I do really like the size and honestly it was the first heat press that I found coming out of a box. So we're gonna use this one. Okay, so now let me just remove that. Oh, I already know I'm gonna need a little bit more heat. And let's see if I can just do this without, let's see here, there we go, without moving that, okay. Okay, so I'm seeing some areas where it didn't quite take, but I think I just need a tad more heat and we will be good to go. So I'm gonna let this Yep, I'm gonna give it just a little bit more. Okay, so I'll come back over here and give it another go. Okay, so I have heated that fairly thoroughly. So I'm gonna turn this over on my craft mat and just draw the heat out. That way it cools quicker. We have so many gifts to make, so I really want to speed that up with the cooling. Gosh, it did a really good job. I have a couple areas and I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that. It's kind of being a stinker, but I feel like if I can get this liner off, I might have a little bit more luck just putting some parchment paper over this and finishing those last two tricky pieces. Oh my goodness, it did really well. This one was a little bit trickier. Um, and sometimes you'll just run into certain blanks that are just harder, you know? And sometimes there's really no rhyme or reason. So what I'm going to do, that looks really good. I'm going to just make sure that I get this all mended. Maybe that looks pretty good. Okay, so I just have a couple little problem areas and I'm gonna grab a little bit of parchment paper and then add the heat. And sometimes this is helpful because once we heat it up, we're not having to tug off that sticky liner. So sometimes I do this and I ever so gently just get as much of that liner off as I can and then I remedy the problem areas. Sometimes you just have to do processes a tad different in order for it to turn out and that's okay. It's worth it. Okay, and I think the last little part is this little stem and we're good to go. Wasn't even applying the full time there, just enough to get that last of the adhesive just to lay right down. We are so close. This would be a good time to bring out that Easy Press Mini and just do little spot checks. I'm gonna bring that out a little bit later to work on some other gifts. So if I need to come back to this and and do those spots then I can, but that actually looks really, really good. Oh, I love it. Okay, so there is our first little gift. Again, you can find tote bags just about anywhere, but I think that this one from Hobby Lobby just looks a tad, oh, I don't know. It just really has a really great visual look to it, plus it's super, super sturdy. So everything I used will be down below. Let's move on to the next gift. Okay, the next gift that I'm going to work on is also a teacher gift. And I'm gonna grab my little cup cradle. I found this really neat water bottle at Dollar Tree. I thought it was super fun. Let's get that nice and steady in there. And before anything else, what I'm going to do is just apply some rubbing alcohol just to the surface here. There we go. And I'll wipe that down, clean that off, make sure there's no oil from my hands, dust from the store, anything on the surface that would prevent my vinyl from laying down. So now, unlike last time, I'm gonna pull a adhesive vinyl and I have this cute SVG. I think I've used this before, but you know what? When you come across designs that you just love, sometimes you pull them out year and year again, especially when you have different teachers because the 
idea and gift will be new to them. But I love this. This is so cute. It says A plus teacher and the style is just really fun. So I thought this would be really neat in more of a large design on this water bottle. And the white is going to just have a really nice contrast against that pink. So let's figure out the last bit now. You know what though? I don't think, I don't think I have any transfer tape. Um, I think I used the last of my favorite transfer tape before I moved. So let me see. Uh, I'm really not jazzed about this, but I'm gonna have to use my Cricut transfer tape. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to. I need to order some more tape. You know, I remember doing that, but in the chaos of moving and the holidays, that absolutely slipped my mind. So we will make do Nothing like having to do a marathon of, <laughs> of gifts and not having your favorites. But you know what? We'll make it work. So let's get, I just like to use my little weeding tool to get a little corner of this up and off. And down below, I will link the transfer tape that I actually recommend because it is so phenomenal. If you've been crafting with me for the past couple years, you know that I randomly found this transfer tape on Amazon that is just amazing. It was on a Black Friday deal and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna give it a go. And that was the end of the story. I never went back to anything different. Okay, let's go ahead. That didn't do too bad gonna have to work right okay here we go let's get that nice and straight how we want it but of course the lid can be moved okay oh isn't that neat okay I like that so I'm gonna do it just like that I want it to be pretty centered and I'm just gonna use my fingers but then go back and reinforce that with my scraper tool and we should be good to go now with drinkware when you give this to your recipient, you just want to remind them not to put it in the dishwasher, which I don't think you would want to put this in the dishwasher anyway. And if you are giving them something like a coffee mug, you may want to also remind them to avoid the microwave. So hand washing is best and avoiding the microwave with ceramic mugs just because it will help the vinyl last longer. Okay, that didn't do too bad. And I'm gonna save this piece, we'll come back to it with some other crafts, see if we can reuse that. But there is another little gift idea, so cute. You can do this for just about anybody. You could do it for coworkers, except you would just change out your little decal, right? So these are really cute. I love this water bottle, and there is another fun gift idea. Okay, so I've had these little can koozies for a while now. <laughs> they have just been sitting in my craft room, and I need to finally use them and I have the perfect recipient for these. So I went ahead and grabbed some iron-on and did a fun little design. And then we're just going to press them onto the front of these little koozies here. But I need to, I think I'll put my heat press to 305. We'll see how that works. Okay, this cute little, SVG says life is better at the lake. Isn't that adorable? I'm just gonna cut off this little piece here. And oh, I think that's gonna be so cute. That sized really nice for that project as well. Okay, let me finish the second one. It's an identical design. And then we'll press these on and check another gift off of my list. Okay, now you wanna make sure that you get all of the little pieces off. So you see how a piece that I had weeded kind of fell back over. Now these sheets are sticky, these little transfer carrier sheets. So you wanna make sure that you double check your designs and make sure there's nothing on the tape that you don't want on your final project because if you press it on there, then it's on there. So I like to make sure that my space is nice and clean from all of the little pieces before I bring my heat source into the mix. That way I ensure that I don't have a whoopsie. Okay, so let's go ahead and 
And I cooled this down to 305. I'm just gonna pre-press that. And I'm also going to lint roll this. Okay, and I could probably do these at the same time, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do them one by one. Get this nice and centered. I think that looks nice. Maybe bring it down a little bit. Oops, and I have, well, that was at the top. I have a little piece there. Here we go. I think that looks good. And what I think I'll do is I'm gonna add a piece of parchment paper just to the top, just to protect the neoprene. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some pressure into this. Okay. So firm pressure, and I will let this cool while I do the second one. Looks like it's kind of lifting at the side, but if I put this face down on a cold surface and let that settle, usually that helps a little bit. We might have to add some additional heat, but we will see in just a moment. Okay, a little bit of pressing here. Hopefully it's not too echoey in this in this video, like I said, I am literally on a table in the middle of an empty room. And what's fun is that similar to my last craft room, my husband and I went ahead and designed a big craft counter and kind of peninsula through Ikea, through their kitchen department. and. I'm so excited. It just got delivered. We don't have anything set up. It's all still in boxes. I have a video coming out on all of this. And if you wanna see my, if you're new and haven't seen my old craft setup, we did a really cool kitchen island turned craft island from Ikea and we designed it through them. It turned out so awesome. So when we found out we were moving and needed to recreate a new craft room, we knew we wanted to do that again because it turned out so nice. Okay, let's put this cool. There we go. And I'm gonna just take this really slow. Oop, I think that's a couple pieces are gonna wanna peel up there. Similar to my first project, I want to make sure I can try to remove my liner as best I can, because then I can just put parchment paper over it and give it a little extra heat. So we'll see what we can do. There we go. Okay, now that's actually pretty good, but I'm going to add the parchment paper at about, I don't know, 15 seconds. And we'll check on this little guy. I'm so happy that these are finally used. I love the idea, and I was saying um, a couple of years back, was it last year, that I was shopping my craft space, and I love the idea of using what you have, because sometimes we buy some things thinking we're gonna craft with them right away, and either something gets in the way, or maybe we become uninspired with them, but, What's really exciting is when you can shop your craft room, especially during the holiday season when it gets quite expensive. It just feels so good to not to know that you are, you know, getting rid of some of the things that have just been sitting around but also turning them into wonderful gifts. So, I love that idea. And if you want more gift ideas, I've done this video every year where I just go to town making tons of Christmas gifts. And it's always such a fun time. Okay, let's see here. That looks awesome. Okay, so here's another fun idea. And based on who you're creating it for, you can you know change out to the designs and they turn out really cute. So here's another fun idea, another two gifts right off of my list. Let's go ahead and keep going. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut these open. I found these at Hobby Lobby. They are keychains, but I think they are called motel keychains. These are so cute and they are trendy right now. I thought these were 
a fun little gift idea. So this came in a pack of six and I found a super cute design that says Tired Moms Club. Now, what I did is I just went and searched for motel keychain designs. And of course, I'll link where I found this down below. I thought this was so fun. But I'm going to reuse that transfer tape that I had used earlier, perfect size. I'm just gonna apply it to the whole thing and then we'll trim them apart. And, you know, I could put rubbing alcohol on these, but I just don't know that it's needed. I think they'll be just fine. Well, I wanna make sure that they turn out because let me tell you, weeding this tiny little font was, oh wow, that was such a, stinker. I had to put on my favorite TV <laughs> and just get it done. So knowing that, let's just make sure that we take every precaution <laughs> so that this turns out. Okay. So let me know how you are doing on your Christmas crafting. I feel like I have a pretty good, a pretty good start on mine. Of course, this is going to help me cross off the bulk of my my list for gift giving, but I think I only have a couple more people to shop for and I can just start wrapping, which is the funnest part for me. I love to wrap. Okay, so I will then trim these all apart and we will get started placing these on. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay, there we go. So I'll just grab one of these, place it right on here. And I thought, I thought this was such a cute little mom or fun little mom gift to all my little mom friends. Tired Moms Club. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I will keep working on these. And again, they have so many fun design ideas. So based on who you're making them for and who you're gift giving to, you could create some really fun ideas. Now, remember for little projects like this, shop your scrap bin. This didn't take barely any vinyl to do. So that's really exciting. Plus I was able to reuse that transfer tape so this ends up being a really fun and affordable little present. I think stuff like this is really fun for teacher gifts. This is fun. Again, you can change up what you actually put on here. These would be fun little coworker gifts, things like that. So shop your scrap bin, use some of those smaller materials that you have trimmed off of larger projects and you'll be good to go. Okay. There we are, and I love how those turned out. I think those are so fun, especially if you have some you know, younger girls, maybe your kiddo is in a fun club, then you could do, you know, if you're in like a gymnastics team or any type of club, these are also really fun little ideas for little girl gifts, and I think they're super cute. All right, let's go ahead and move on, but I have six more things done. I'm starting to feel really productive. Okay, I'm going to bring out my little mini easy press because I have a few crafts that I need to do that I think the mini would do better with. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that preheated. But I found these cute little pouches at, um, they're called a nylon cosmetic bag. Aren't these so sweet? I found these at um, Hobby Lobby and I thought these were adorable. I'm gonna make some little pouches for my kiddos because they need little areas to house little things on the go. Whether we're in the car, heading to church, can put little pens in here, or any of their little toys. I think this is going to really help us get organized. Plus, how adorable are these? So I added their little monogram, and I have this really cute font, I'll link it down below, that I thought, would be perfect for this project because I thought it would make it kind of playful. So let's go ahead, get this all weeded out. Okay, so looks 
excited to see how this looks. Oh, isn't that fun? I think that's really cute. Let me do the second one and we'll get these pressed right on. Okay, so that's already preheated. And you know me, I love a good monogram, but I also love a good monogram when you can kind of get a little bit playful with them or just kind of get, you know, unique with them when you choose a fun font. Okay, so let's go ahead and repeat all of those steps that we do when working with iron-on. We're going to bring in our heat mat and then preheat our little bag here. Okay. So, I think if I just kind of lay that flat, let me just preheat this really quickly. So I want to just be mindful of the material. Okay, I think that will be fine. Always want to monitor the material in front of you. Make sure you're always being super careful with your heat. Keep a close eye on it. Okay, let me see if I can get this nice and... <laughs> it's kind of hard to get it all centered when... Let's see. And it's kind of uh, bunched up like that, but I think actually that does look good. Okay, I think that will look nice. So with the little mini, this is intended to be moved around and I'm monitoring my project and that has really laid down really quickly. In fact, oops, oh goodness, please say I didn't, oh. Goodness gracious. This is what happens when you are crafting quickly. I almost ironed on my other monogram to my heat mat. Okay, that actually is already on there. I'm going to give that just a tad a bit more heat, but that was very quick. That's why you always, again, I'll repeat myself because this is a great example of why you monitor your project. You know, keep an eye on it because just because you look up the heat settings and it says, you know, 30 seconds or, you know, gives you a certain time frame, that does not necessarily mean that it's not going to, you know, lay down sooner. So that took barely any time. Okay, I'm gonna let that cool, just like I do, put it on a cool surface. We'll repeat the steps with this one and be all set. So these little pouches, they were, I think, $3.99. So how affordable would this be for cute little coworker gifts, teacher gifts, if you do little gifts for your neighbors or Again, if you have a, um, a child that's in sports and they want to do teammate gifts, I feel like this is such a great idea. Okay, so that looks great. I'm going to let that cool and switch it out for this one. See if we can peel this off. Oh, that looks so nice. And if I go ahead and kind of zip that back up, oh, that's so cute. So fun. I love the gold embellishment on that. I think that looks really sweet. So very cute. I love the size of this. In fact, I'm feeling like I could use something like this for my own bag. That's so fun. Okay, I'll go ahead and finish this one up and we'll be done. Okay, another one done. So that's two additional gifts that I am all finished with and it's such a fun idea. So head to Hobby Lobby if you have one near you. I do believe they had some additional colors, but I think those are really fun, fun little idea. And again, I think that font really helped create such a fun look for that. Okay, and I'm going to, again, leave my little Easy Press Mini out and I'm gonna do several crafts in a row with it because it's nice and hot and I have a few crafts that 
really, really will benefit from the little mini press. So I got this cute hat from Hobby Lobby. I also had a leftover patch. I made a shirt for my daughter with this little patch and I wanted to put the remaining patch, I think it came in a three pack, but I wanted to put it on a hat. I thought that would be so cute. And I found this again at Hobby Lobby. I loved the distressed kind of look of this hat. It's kind of hard to maybe see on camera, but it does have kind of a, a nice, more worn look, which I really do prefer. So I'm gonna make this for one of my kiddos. And let's see, I think I'm gonna bring in some parchment paper, just a little corner of that, just to protect the patch from the heat. Make sure, let me make sure that's nice and straight. Yeah, I think that looks fine. Okay, let's go ahead and apply some heat there. And then what I'll do is I will go ahead and flip the hat over and heat it from the inside out. That way I can heat the hat more directly onto the adhesive. And hopefully, Hopefully that makes sense, but you'll see it play out. I love these little patches. Again, um, the patches are also from Hobby Lobby. I feel like they have such an assortment. And I'm gonna do a few other patches on some gifts, probably a little bit later. Oh, that looks great. So that's really nice and on there. What I'm going to do is just flip the hat over this way now, and I'm going to heat that patch from the back. That way I have more of a really direct contact with it. And again, just monitor your project in front of you to see how long you wanna do that for. Oops, let's see here. I think that's going to be just perfect. Okay, I'm not going to bend this back, actually. There we go. How cute is that? I think that is so fun for a little kiddo hat. So fun. Before I move on to my next gift, I remembered that I wanted to circle back to this gift because I think using the mini will allow me just to get those little problem areas, get those really placed on there just right. I love the mini for projects like this as well, where you kind of have difficulty with the larger presses or you need to do a little bit of mending, but you don't want to continuously reheat the entire project. Okay, let's check on that. I think that looks, I think that looks really great. I think it's going to work. Okay, so let's move on to some more gifts. The next thing I want to work on are these cute little pouches and I almost weeded all of this but I need to finish it up. I was pre-weeding it the other day just to make sure that well to be honest my I was doing matless cutting on my Explore 3 so I'm using smart iron on here but what happened was it kind of loaded a little bit crooked and it's because my Cricut's kind of on a craft cart right now. Again, this little um, temporary setup that I'm using right now is, it's working, but it's chaotic. And trust me, I'm gonna show you some behind the scenes of what my craft room is looking like as I am moving, right? Because I am not quite set up, but I have things I need to get done, so. Thank goodness my husband has been so good about getting little temporary areas set up so that I can continue to get things done and get crafting during this whole craft room build. So like I was saying, my Smart Iron On kind of loaded a little bit crooked the other day. So I wanted to pre-weed some of that just to make sure that it did actually cut 
and it did. That's perfect. So let me trim these pieces apart. Now, I love ideas of this either for teachers or neighbors, and you can just create these little pouches, iron on a little greeting or a personalization that you would like, and then you can fill them with candy. So this is a really great idea for neighbors. I think this is something that is super quick and easy and affordable. And again, you can get really creative with what you decide to put on the front. Okay, so before I get started here, I will lint roll these because I can already see they have a little bit of loose pieces kind of on the surface. In fact, I'm gonna use the other side. Oh, maybe not. That one kind of has a goober on each side, but we'll get that looking really nice. And finally, there we go. Okay, so same process. Let's go ahead and preheat, just like so. Grab one of our designs. I think that looks so, so cute. Very pretty. Okay, I like how that looks. And I kind of like to bring these down just a little bit because once you go to, yeah, once you go to tie it, you want to have this down low enough to where you can still read it and it doesn't, you know, become part of that scrunched area. So that is a little tip that I think is worth keeping in mind. Again, this little mini is intended to move around as it's heating. So if you're wondering why I'm doing that, the other presses you just lay on there, but this one allows a little bit of movement. Okay, that looks like it's done a great job and I will go ahead and get all of these done. And in between, what I'll do is again, place them on a nice cool surface. I love my glass mat for that. Draw that heat out. That way as I am doing each one, one is cooling can kind of get a nice little production line going and you're done in no time. Okay, I finished my fourth one, and because I have a little production line going here, then my first one is now nice and cool. Oops, let's see. I have to give some additional heat. Let's see if I can get this off. Yeah, this looks good. Okay, there we go. And, okay, perfect. What I'll do is because I had a little bit of pulling there, I'm going to put some parchment paper right off the top, give it some additional heat. And again, the reason why I like to do this is because then after I add a little bit more heat, there's no pulling and tugging because I think that the removal of the um, sticky transfer sheet, I think that that can sometimes be half the problem when, you know, you have some pulling going on, but those turned out really cute. Now, this is also a really fun idea for a mailman. Oops, my other heat press is wondering why I'm ignoring it. Um, and quite honestly, please don't, please don't make me feel like I'm the only one thinking this, but from time to time, you know, it happens. It's such a busy time of year that sometimes you're so busy that someone that you intend to buy for, you know, you might accidentally <laughs> you know, forget about or not 
in a in a bad way, but either that or someone you didn't quite expect to either bring something over or bring a little gift by does. And it's nice to have little extra things like this on hand so that if something like that does arise, you know, either someone from church brings you something or maybe one of your little book club friends decides to give everybody a little something, then you kind of have a couple little extra gifts on hand for those little moments where in the busyness of the season you may have forgotten or want to quickly reciprocate. So it's nice to have little gifts like that on hand. And you know what? Never underestimate a nice little bag of chocolates and maybe a little gift card. It's always a good idea. Okay, so let's let this one peel up. Looks great. Okay. Oh, and that one was the best out of all of them. I'm not sure why, but that one needs no additional help. Okay, so four more little ideas. I think these are wonderful for either a Bible study group, book club, something where you just wanna do something little. And I think this is a very affordable idea. Plus, look at the size of your iron on here and make sure you're shopping your scrap bin because this is another great idea for using smaller pieces. Okay, I found these cute little shoes at Hobby Lobby. I had to pick these up and I'm going to add a little personalization to them. Now, one thing that you wanna keep in mind now, I'm going to actually leave this little fill on the inside because it's gonna help build up something for me to press on. So if you have, you know, just this little paper inside, of course you wanna check and make sure it's not something, you know, different or any other material, but keep it in there so that you can have something to kind of build up that surface. That'll be really helpful. Now, something to keep in mind when doing little shoes like this is you wanna be careful of this, you know, rubber right there. So I like to make sure that I go this way so that I can always have a line of sight for that little rubber. That way my heat doesn't come into contact with it. So I'm just pre-pressing the area that I want to add a little design to. And I've done shoes, I think this is my third pair of shoes I've done. I have other videos on there. You can just go to my little homepage on my channel and there is a little magnifying glass on the top right side. And if you click that little magnifying glass and type in some keywords, it will only show you videos on my channel with those keywords. So if you wanted to do a couple more videos about how to do shoes, then go ahead and just type in shoes in that little magnifying glass area. It's that little search feature, and then you'll get a couple more ideas. Okay, so I just found these. These were a free little design in Design Space, and I thought it'd be cute to do a little star trio on these shoes. So I'm just gonna get them right where I'd like them. Again, I'm gonna use this paper to build up, just like that. Okay, and then also being mindful. Now it takes very little heat. In fact, those are already tacked down. Now I'm just gonna give them a little bit of additional heat to finish, but always again, be mindful of that rubber. You just wanna keep your heat away from that. And those are already down. So I'm gonna let that cool and then I can peel it off. Now the reason a mini is great for this is obviously, you can tell visually by the size, right? It's a smaller press, but also it is easier to go around little curved areas very easy to rotate. I'm just gonna set this to the side and I'll do this one. And I'm just doing the little outside of the shoes. And I do want these to match, so it looks like I did something like, let's see, how did I do that? Something kinda like that, I think that's cute. Okay, and utilizing that filling. Okay. There we go. 
built that up and press these on. Every other time I have done shoes, I have done something in the toe area and the other ones I did didn't have um, or had more area to do that. So again, if you need more ideas, I have those in video. In fact, I did a pair of shoes for, oh, did I get, mm, I might've gotten a little bit of that rubber. I don't know, I can't tell. Um, I did a really cute pair of shoes with some glitter iron on for my daughter. I think they were bunnies. Oh my goodness, she wore those forever. Now I'm just going to, after it's cooled, peel that up and then look how cute that is. Isn't that fun? Such a fun little gift too. This one needs to cool just a tad longer and then we'll be good. There we are. It looks like I did kind of get, do you see? Got a little bit of the little rubber there. So just be careful and try not to get into contact there because you don't want to, not only do you not want to, you know, melt that, but you don't want to accidentally hurt your heat press, right? Okay, there's another fun little idea. And I think those are so cute. Those turned out great. And we're done with another little gift that has been on my list. Okay, so I have seen this little idea floating around for quite a while now and have wanted to try it. So I went to the Dollar Tree and I got a wine glass and a coffee mug. And it's a really a cute idea where you put a little decal on the coffee mug that says before work, and then you put another decal on the wine glass that says something like after work or because of work. I think that's such a cute little gift idea. So I'm going to do two sets of these. Again, you give them as a little pair. And I thought this was such a fun idea and I'm gonna make it happen this year. I know, I know some people who would get a kick out of this. So it's just a fun, cute little idea. Okay, so I will link the design so that if you wanna do this too, you can just go grab a little coffee mug and a wine glass and get this recreated. Okay, I love this font. Now I don't have font information because this is a SVG. It looks like it's probably hand lettering. Oh, before I work, that's cute. Okay, I thought it said before work and then I'll just do this really quickly at the same time. Do the wine glass decal and get this all weeded out as well. So if you are doing a ton of Christmas gifts, this is what I recommend that you do. Oops, hold on, I'm having a little malfunction. Let me do a little surgery on this. I recommend, at least this is how I feel that I work the most efficiently when I have a ton of crafting, or gifts to create. I find it best to lay out everything that you want to do. So in my craft room on my floor, I have all of my projects laid out, all of my gift ideas laid out. And then I go through and I do all of my cutting. I find all of the designs and I get all of the cutting done. And I think that if you can do it like that and kind of work in little batches, if you will, you know, do all of your cutting at once, all of your weeding at once, and then do all of your crafting together. I think you can kind of get yourself in a zone where you find that you're pretty efficient. But let me know what you do when you have a ton of crafting to get done. Do you find it easiest to do one craft at a time where you you know, sit down with, let's say your coffee mug and you get everything designed and cut and put on there and then you move on? Or do you kind of get all of your ideas kind of cut out first and then sit down and get all of your crafting done together. You know, it re there really isn't a wrong way to do it because everybody works a little differently. But I'd be interested to know how you work in bulk like that when you have so much to get done. Okay, let's grab some new transfer tape and let's go ahead. Actually, I think this one is a little bit bigger, so I'm going to trim down for my bigger. That way I can reuse it. Okay, that way it's big enough for my smaller one as well. Okay, 
that looks great. Okay, there we go. Now again, with drinkware, either you know put a little note with your gift or something to let that recipient know that they're going to want to hand wash only. And now that we're working on a coffee mug or something that you know could potentially go in the microwave for a little reheat, you'd also want to just recommend that they don't they don't do the microwave. These are just things that are going to help that vinyl last just a tad longer. Now, when doing drinkware where they sip directly from it, as opposed to the water bottle earlier where they sip from a straw, you want to be mindful that you give enough room for the person to sip without their lip touching the vinyl. Because vinyl technically is not food safe, which it's just fine, but you just want to make sure that they're not having their lip you know, touching it while they're sipping. And that is plenty of room. Okay, and if you're not quite sure, I, when I was first starting out, I would actually kind of, you know, pretend that I was sipping from it just to kind of see like how much room do I really need when I was making my first coffee mug for myself. Okay, so if you aren't quite sure, give it a little test because that's not something we truly think of, right? When we're sipping our coffee. Okay, so there is the before work. I'm gonna reuse my transfer tape. I'll just place it right on here. Burnish that down. And I like to do the back side as well. It just really helps that vinyl transfer and peel off nicely. Again, rubbing alcohol. There we go. And Perfect. Okay. Beautiful. And this says because I work, which I think is hilarious. Okay. And again, being mindful of giving enough room to sip. And this one kind of curves more than the other one. So I'm just going to kind of go in sections lay those pieces down with my finger okay that way everything lays down nice and flat then once i've done that you can go back in with your little squeegee and really reinforce that pressure so that you don't have any bubbles super cute i love that i think it's so cute fun little duo set and there we are. Oh, that turned out really nice. I have one little spot that I am going to remedy with my weeding tool. Just this little A. Kind of got a little crease in it. And I'm going to reuse this transfer tape on my second set. But this little A has a crease in it. So I'm just going to ever so gently peel that up and remove that little kind of ripple or fold, lay that down nice. Okay, there we go, easy peasy. And there is the cute little gift idea. I think that's so fun. Again, this idea has been floating around for quite some time. I'm just now finding the perfect recipient that will get a kick out of this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and really quickly work on my second set. Let me move these off to the side so that I don't spray on them, but I'll get these done and I'll have another set of gifts all completed. Okay, I just finished the second little pair and I noticed that I didn't weed out a little center here, so I'm simply going to really quickly get the little middle from this R off. Easy peasy. And another couple sets of gifts that I have done. I think that's really fun. All right, let me know if you have done this before or if you're gonna recreate it. I think it's such a fun little idea. And every once in a while, you'll come into contact with the perfect person that would appreciate and get a kick out of it. Okay, I need to do another teacher gift. And I wanted to give an idea for a masculine teacher gift because sometimes I feel like gifts um, for teachers can be really feminine, so. I have this really nice mug, isn't this neat? I'll link it down below. And they're super, super nice, but 
what I did is I found <clears throat> this really cute font and then just typed out a fun little best teacher ever. And I feel like when you are just mindful of the font that you choose, you know, because some fonts, right, they can be a tad more feminine. I think we all can agree that, um, you know, it can visually really change the look of what you're doing. But I found this font and I thought that this really helped give it more of a masculine feel, kind of more of the kind of school varsity letter idea font. So I'm gonna do that. And the reason being also is I went in search of, you know, some kind of design and I just felt like everything took a more feminine side, whether just through the types of fonts that were used or, you know, additions of florals or anything like that. Okay, so I have my, again, giving enough room to sip, but I also, also gonna center it with this, gosh, what's the word? <laughs> Logo, goodness. Okay, here we go, reinforce it. And we can peel that off. And I think that that is really fun. Not too girly, definitely great for a male teacher. All right, another little teacher gift already done, check. And let's go ahead and continue getting these gifts done. Okay, so I was able to look through a couple boxes and find my larger Easy Press. So I'm going to set this to 305 for 30 seconds and that looks good. I can't wait to get everything unpacked. Honestly, it kind of feels like Christmas as I'm unpacking all of my craft room items. It's been a couple months since I've seen everything and it feels good to be reunited with all of my fun little things. So I am going to make a gift for my father-in-law and he requested this shirt a while ago. So we're gonna make it happen. So I have a really cool font. I think I've used this a few times in my gifts so far just because it's one of those fonts that really, I don't know. I think it's just super fun. So let me get this all weeded out. This is gonna say Papa to the fourth power. Now I did actually go and grab a four in a different font. And I can't remember what font that was, but sometimes you'll find that the numbers maybe just don't look right in a particular font. So I don't know, sometimes you just have to mix and match a little bit and that is okay. For the sake of the design, it's okay. Last few pieces weeded out and we are all set. Okay, and while this is getting up to temperature, I'm going to just preheat the shirt. Okay, and I did go ahead and pre-wash this, so we are good to go. I can place my design. Okay, now bring that down a little bit. And I'll have to shift it on my shirt a little bit. Okay, that is up to temperature. I like how that looks. Okay, so I'm gonna shift this so that <clears throat> each little section is on my heat mat. Okay, and we'll just press this in sections. Here we go, 305 for 30 seconds. Okay, there we go. And then I'll just move my little pressing board underneath, okay? And do the remaining portion. Here we go. Okay. Now, what I'll do is just let this cool. Now, when you have a heat mat underneath, it retains a lot of heat because it's helping heat the iron-on both from the front and the back. So if you take it off of your little heat pad, it will help to bring that heat out of your iron-on quicker. 
So if you are trying to craft a little quicker, make sure you take whatever you're working on off of your heat mat and that will really help. Okay, so that's just gonna sit on there and retain its heat and then you'll be waiting much longer. Oh my gosh, that did so beautifully. I have zero problem areas. And there is the fun shirt. And I will link this um, font that I have down below. Again, I just grabbed a random something to do the four and I think that actually paired really well together, but super nice. I love how that turned out and it'll be a great gift. Okay, since I have my heat press out, I'm gonna go ahead and just do one more shirt. I have a few more coming up, but we'll get those done a little bit later. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to have to reset this for a pattern iron on. And let's go ahead and bump this up to 340. Okay, so you always want to make sure you're checking the heat settings for the particular brand that you're working with and the type of iron-on that you're working with. Now, when you are trying to work with pattern iron-on, I feel like a lot of people kind of get stuck with what to do with pattern iron-on. And one thing that I really like to do is I like to do more solid shapes or solid animals, anything that has a lot of surface area. And the reason is because if it has a lot of surface area, then you will showcase the pattern better. So you just want to make sure, you know, if you are just doing text, sometimes the font that you're choosing might be too thin and then you lose the pattern along the way. So if you are doing a font, wow, that's already up to temperature. Um, if you are doing a font, maybe pick a thicker font to where you're going to see a lot of that iron on. And in this case, I went ahead and found this cute little rocket ship. I think I got all the pieces out. This was just a free design in Design Space. I thought it was so cute, and I thought it would showcase the pattern really nicely because there's so much surface area on this particular design. So let me preheat my shirt. I'm gonna make this for my little boy because he's quickly growing out of this size, and I had this size all waiting and ready for creating something fun for him, and by golly, he just grew so quickly that now I'm finding I'm making the shirt out of panic because <laughs> he's gonna grow out of it. Okay, so it's all preheated, lint rolled, pre-washed. I'm gonna do this at a little bit of a tilt. I think that would be really cute. Oh, I love that. So cute with some little jeans. Okay, now the pattern iron-on doesn't have a sticky carrier sheet, so it does kind of shift. So if you wanted to keep this in place, you could use a um, tape, but make sure it's a heat resistant tape. I'm actually just going to quickly press that on. So hopefully I can get that on there. There we go. Um, just make sure it's a heat resistant tape. That way it doesn't melt and ruin your project, but more importantly, you don't want to melt tape onto your machine and ruin that as well. So that's helpful to have heat tape when you need it though. All right. And once again, what I'll do is remove my shirt from my mat. This is nice and hot. And then I like to just turn it over. You really can feel the heat just come right out of it. So it just helps when you are crafting quickly. All right, there we go. Now, let's see how we did here. Well, that looks really good. Okay, there we are. How cute, so easy and it showcased that pattern so nicely. So at Hobby Lobby recently, they had these really neat little frames and I love them because they're already pre-done. You know, they're not a bare wood that you have to end up painting. It has a really nice little frame around this little base piece, which I think is so pleasing to the eye. And I love this for quick crafting. So I went ahead and grabbed a couple of them. The next one you'll see in a little bit because they had a variety of sizes. And I'm really quickly going to make a little sign. I love making signs for people because you can really personalize it to their interests. It's so fun. And let's make sure this weeds out nice. And I found a really cute design for this shape that I think will turn out so pretty. Okay, so how cute is this? This says Lake Life and I'm giving this to the same people that I made those koozies for. 
and I think this is so fun. So I love this fun little design. I think it's just gonna look very neat and clean on this particular little sign here. Okay, let's trim down some transfer tape. That looks just about right. Get that placed right on there. So when I have something that's a little bit longer like this, I usually like to put down my transfer tape in little sections because it's just less overwhelming. So what I'd usually do is just peel back about an inch of that backer and then I'll place it down inch by inch. So what I'll do is just place that down and I'll grab that little tab that I previously folded back and then I'll pull it and place all of the remaining transfer tape down. It just really, really helps keep everything a little bit more manageable because when you have a big sticky piece of transfer tape sometimes it wants to cling down and gets a little bit overwhelming in a hurry we like to keep it nice and relaxing okay now let me peel this off and I'm having good luck with this transfer tape tonight so that's nice when you have a lot to do, you want your craft supplies working working well for you. Oh, I love how that looks. I think if I put that up maybe a little bit. There. Just like that. Yes, I really like that. Okay, let's go ahead and burnish that down a little bit with the scraper. And we'll have ourselves a sign. Again, I love that these are pre-done. They are grab and go. It makes for quick crafting, especially, you know, in the seasons where you have many things to get done and cross off your list. So remember times like these for buying certain blanks that are a little bit more grab and go. It certainly helps. Okay, there we go. And I'll keep that transfer tape for later. But I think that turned out really, really nice. I like how clean that looks. And I can just cut this little piece off on the back, get it all wrapped up, and it's ready to go. So this was in the wood pile section. They call it a white sign with gray frame. Gotta love Hobby Lobby. They are so literal when naming their pieces. So there's another fun gift crossed off my list. Okay, so it's actually about a week later. I actually got a little bit under the weather, so if you hear sniffles and a little bit more of a froggy throat, then that's me just trying to get well. But Christmas is not going to wait. It's coming up, so I need to get this stuff done. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do these little tote bags. Now, I'm gonna speak to these for a second. These are actually 100% polyester and I found them at Hobby Lobby in their sublimation section. But my sublimation printer is not quite ready. It's not unpacked yet. So I won't be doing any sublimation for Christmas gifts this year. But if you do need some inspiration for sublimation gifts that you can give, then I'll place a link to a really fun video for that. Okay, so now, mind you, I'm just going to say this once. Yes, I'm going to waste a little bit of iron-on here, but I've had this iron-on for probably close to three years now and haven't touched it yet, so I am gonna sacrifice the extra because I need to use it, and I'm not too worried about keeping the scraps on this one. But if you wanted to, you could you know, cut out these areas and keep them for other projects. Okay, so let's see where that little scrap is. Now, again, if you want to keep this middle area, you simply just take a true control knife and just cut out this area in the middle. That way you can save it, because as long as it remains on the liner, you can keep it and you can recut it and all that fun stuff. Okay, so I have two of the exact same design. I think it's cute. I thought it'd be really dainty and pretty on a little tote bag. So let me just trim these apart. I also have my Easy Press set to 330 for 30 seconds. And that was just me putting in glitter iron on as my material that I'm pressing and polyester as my material that I am pressing onto. So let's prep these bags. Okay, grab my little 
heat mat here. Put this right on here. And as always, I'm going to, whoops, got stuck there. I'm going to lint roll the surface. And then as my press is preheating, let's see here, there we go. We'll just preheat the material, just like that. I am more than ever missing my heat press. My pink heat press that I show often in my crafting, it really, really does make lots of projects like this and crafting for holidays when you have several things to accomplish, it really does make it really easy. So I'm excited to get that unpacked. Okay, I think that looks good. Yes, let's see. And I'm giving a lot of room down here too because once the bag opens up, you want to make sure that you're not too far down, right? So that looks pretty centered once it's open if you're using this as the bottom. Okay, so there we go. Looks nice, I need to tilt it just a hair. Okay, and it's almost to temperature. Okay, it's just a couple degrees off, so oh, there we go. I'll go ahead and press that on. And then I will set this aside to cool, and while it's cooling, I'll press the second tote bag. Okay, that one is finished, so I will just do the exact same thing for the next one, and I'll let this cool so that I can peel this up. And I can already tell with my first one that I'm going to need to apply some more heat. So with this one, I'm gonna give it some really firm pressure to see if that helps with the second time. Okay, so I gave that some very firm pressure. And I'll let this set for a moment. And let's bring this one back in. Let's see how we did. I know I have an area over here Actually, it did really well. I just have a couple of areas that need a little extra work. Honestly, it was the sides, so that's interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna place my liner right back over, okay? And then I'll just give it some additional heat, and that will do the trick. So let's make sure there's nothing underneath so it gets a nice even press. You wanna make sure you don't have your little handles underneath where it would raise it up okay okay so that one is nice and repressed and let me check this one now remember this one i gave much more intentional firm pressure so let's see if that helped it did actually i think that did really good i don't have any problem areas i don't think i'm going to give it maybe half the heat because i think this one is just kind of struggling a little bit on the right side, so maybe just 15 seconds and we'll be good to go. A lot of doing heat press projects is simply monitoring your projects in front of you. So you just see what it needs and try new things sometimes. There you go, okay, perfect. And this one is just about cool, so there we go. Okay, two additional little tote bags for Christmas. These are wonderful teacher gifts. They are also really nice coworker gifts as well. And I love the glitter on that. I think that is so, so pretty. Okay, I think in order to be efficient, I am going to just pause and do all of my heat press projects while my press is nice and hot. And then I'll finish up all of my gifts with my adhesive vinyl. That way I can just get a little organized and get this done so that I can rest and relax and start wrapping. Okay, Hobby Lobby has these really cool patches and I am absolutely obsessed with these. I have purchased them a couple times. They are so fun, but I am new to this one. Isn't that sweet? I love this for a ball cap and I also love this, you'll see what I'm gonna do in a moment, but I'm gonna put it on a sweatshirt. I also love this one as well and I purchased a third one, but it's not going to be a gift, so you'll see that in 2024. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we're saying that. But we'll see that next year when we do some craft inspiration. So I am going to do some little iron-on projects, which are super fun, and let me grab my first sweatshirt. Okay, so the first sweatshirt is this really nice navy, and I got this on Amazon. As I'm thinking through how to do this, it's harder and harder every year to build the supply list. So I'm definitely being very mindful to 
verbally speak where I purchased everything, but it's gonna be really hard for me to actually list every single thing in that description box below. And that's because YouTube limits you on how many characters you can have. So what I'm going to do is, again, I am going to verbally tell you where I've gotten all of the blanks, but I'm not going to link them in order to save some space, but I will link all of the designs that I've used. That way you are having an easier time finding those. Okay, so I did pre-wash this sweatshirt, something I prefer to do. Every time that I don't pre-wash something, I always end up not having a good experience with either iron-on or anything that I am placing on a shirt. So that's my process, but you do what you would like to do. So I have four of these patches, just like so. I wanna curve these a bit. So, oh, I think that looks so neat with the navy. I'm going to be mindful of center being this little, little cross here. Okay, and then let's do, let's move this over a little bit and make this okay. I really like that. I think that is super fun. I like the placement of it. I'm just making sure, yep, that looks center to me. You can always bring out a measuring tape if you are not quite sure, but I like how that looks. Okay, so, okay, I'm just grabbing some parchment paper from my infusible ink and I am going to place that over, and I'm gonna try that 330 for 30 seconds and see how that does. Again, I'll have to do it in two little chunks because of the size, but it'll be just fine. Okay, so same process with doing more of patches with lint rolling, preheating. You can see exactly why we want to lint roll. But we're also going to take an additional step that I like to do with patches, and that is once it really cools down, we're gonna flip the shirt inside out, and we're gonna heat it from the inside out as well. It's a good idea with patches. Okay, I think that looked good. I wanna make sure I got this side and go. Okay, now let's just see how that looks. Oh, that looks really nice. Okay, I don't want to flip it inside out until it's cool because if it's not quite set, I don't want the actual movement of flipping it inside out to kind of peel it up. So I'm gonna set this to the side really gently and we're gonna do our second shirt. Okay, and the second shirt I got from Amazon as well. And let's, <laughs> let's make sure that we clean this off we were not creating any problems. Okay, and I'll lint roll here. Again, pre-washed my sweatshirt. And this one, I am not ashamed to admit, this one's for me, to me, from me. If you're a mama, you know sometimes you gotta do it. Even though my hubby is an amazing gift giver. Between the two of us, he's a better gift giver than I am. So, he definitely covers the gifts, but sometimes I fill it in a little bit. Okay, so. Ooh, this one has like an adhesive on it. Super interesting. It is a patch though, right? Oh, it's a sticker patch. Oh my word. I am so glad that I didn't. Okay, so what do, does it, is it made for clothing? I am so confused. Or is this made as like an adhesive for, I mean, what? I mean, you wouldn't put it on like a water bottle because it's chenille, so it would be, it would get all wet. How does this work? And of course they don't have any, oh my goodness, they don't have any directions at all. Darn it, I was really giddy about this particular one. Sticker patch. Well, should I try? Hmm, let me try. I mean, I'll try for everybody. Maybe it just means that there's, gosh, you know, I really don't know. Because how would you ever wash it? Or how would you ever wash something, right? Um, let's, let's just try, you know? I'll take one for the team. Isn't that adorable? I hope this works. I hope this works out, but I'm a little nervous because it has like a sticky adhesive on there. I'm so confused. Let me know if you've seen this before, like a sticker patch, and what the heck you do with it. And don't take my word for this. <laughs> Maybe do some research. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna do, oh, I didn't even time it, but I'm gonna do like 15 seconds there. 
Okay, I'm wondering if it just means that, you know, you can stick it somewhere to position it. I'll have to let you know. It's super cute though. Okay, let's go back to the first one and definitely go into the comments and kindly, and I feel like I have to every once in a while remind people of kindness, but kindly go down into the comment section and let me know about that sticker patch. Okay, so this is just inside out. You can see, see my patches, okay? And these are the more traditional patches that I've always done where it's just, they kind of float. There's nothing on the back of them. I mean, there's an adhesive, but not a, not a sticky adhesive. And I'm going to do probably, well, I'm gonna do the 30 seconds again, just because I'm a nervous Nelly. I wanna make sure that this lasts a good long while. And earlier I said, you wouldn't wanna wash it, but of course you would because it's on a sweatshirt. So I take that back. I blame the cold. It's a rough one, everyone. It's just, I feel like as soon as we get healthy, we turn around and it's just a mess again. It's awful. I was at the kids pediatrician the other day and they were like, yep, it is par for the course. So just that time of year. Okay, now I am so eager to get back to the other one. I'm Again, I'm not going to flip this inside out or right side out now because I don't want to disrupt those patches. So I like to wait till they're cool. And let's do the same thing for this one. I don't even know what to think about this, but I'm just gonna give it the good old college try. Okay, so the patch is here. To be honest, I'm not like smelling anything that would concern me about putting heat on it, but again, I'm kind of at a loss here. It's just an experiment at this point. Okay, I'm starting to wonder. I'm not thinking this is for sure because I'm I'm looking at the two. So this is where the mama one came in or came on. This is Design Loft Iron On. It completely, you know, says that. It also does come with heating instructions. And this one is Paper Studio. So I'm thinking that this is not for a garment. But Gosh, would that be cute? So tell me what you would put this on. I think it would be cute on a notebook. I think that would be super fun. And if you are totally laughing at me right now, this is a super honest mistake because they have it with all the patches or near the patches. So honestly, at first glance, you would think, right, that you could, yeah, see, this is a sticker. <laughs> hey, but you know what? It didn't ruin it. So I still have... Okay, I'm gonna take this off. It didn't ruin it at all. So I'll put this right back on here and I will get inspired with it. Let me know down below what you would do with it and we will do this after the new year. Okay, for this next iron on craft, I'm going to, let's see, bring this in for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and cool this down to 315 for 30 seconds. And let's go ahead and weed this out. I'm going to do a little apron for a little one who loves to craft and I think it'll be super cute. So I'm gonna leave that, obviously, I'm gonna leave that little patch snafu in the video because I know you guys love it when I do that. Helps it just stay real that we all have those struggles with craft supplies sometimes. <laughs> but I'm super, super anxious to get crafting with that. I think it'll be super fun, okay. Trying to see my iron on here. This file I think I've used before, um, but it's so cute and I thought it would look really cute on an apron for a little one who just needs a little something to cover when getting messy with arts and crafts. I think it'd be cute. So I'm gonna get this all weeded. Just use a nice pink iron on. Okay, and this is the little apron I'm going to put it on. So there's a little bit of detail that I need to work, work my way through over here. Probably not my favorite task when I have a cold, but gotta get it done. Okay, so there is our cute little design. How sweet is that? And I'll preheat this. There we go. And let's get it lint rolled as well. I love this 
apron. They come in a couple different styles at Hobby Lobby. This has the ruffle little bottom, which I think is beyond darling. I picked up two of them while I was there. I think they're so cute. Oops. And just a cute little detail that really, really makes it pretty. Okay, I think that that looks good. Let me make sure that that L, that's kind of our point of reference for alignment there. Okay, I think that looks good. Again, 315 for 30 seconds, and I'll give that firm pressure. Okay, we're gonna let this cool. And again, cool surface really helps speed that along, especially when you have quite a list. And literally, it takes seconds and you're ready to go. Okay, ooh, I'm seeing a little problem area there. Hold on. Oh, all the way around. Okay, let's see. Sometimes, yeah. Okay, let's give that some more heat. And I am going to completely set this aside for a few minutes while I get my next gift done. That way it's really, really cool before I attempt to peel that again. Okay, I've had these really cute little boxes. I've used these for party favors in the past. I think when I was crafting my son's birthday party, that was the last time that I used these. And they're really nice little size for, you know, putting little favors or in this case for the holidays, just a little holiday treat in. So you could absolutely turn this into a little coworker gift, teacher gift. I like things like this for, um, you know, Bible study groups and things like that where you have quite a few to make. It just makes it a little bit easier when you have more of a manageable project. And you can absolutely do this in bulk so easily. So I have this really pretty cut file. It simply says, Merry Christmas. I'll finish this up. And we're gonna iron it on to this box here. And yes, whoops, oops, I'm gonna have to fix that. Yes, you can iron on to like cardboard. So if you didn't know that, get ready to be inspired because it really does open up some possibilities. For me, it opens up possibilities when I want to work with glitter because I don't like glitter adhesive vinyl. I only like their iron on. I just, glitter adhesive vinyl, I think is just a mess. So, oops, this just does not want to come off. Although, now I'm jinxing myself, right? And saying it's so easy and it's being a complete stinker you know I wonder if that's getting hard because actually I am waiting on that warm mat and I know some people say that that helps I don't really think it does I think it makes it kind of more flexible in a way that I am uh, don't think is helpful okay so there we go, it's working a lot better on a cool surface. I should have thought of that. And another way, now if you were making a ton of these, this may not be a scrap buster craft because you would be doing them in bulk, but if you were just doing one or two, I grabbed this little piece out of my scrap bin and was able to use some leftover pieces to also create these little gifts. Okay, so these say Merry Christmas, isn't that pretty? I think that's really fun, I'll trim these apart. Now, unlike the other ones, I also have a little bit of tape here. Do you see where I had taped my iron on? I'm going to cut that off so it doesn't melt onto my heat press. Okay, and unlike the last crafts we've done, what I'm going to do is, I'm not gonna lint curl them, that's not necessary. I'm gonna do it this way so that I can do them both at once. But what I will do is, I will preheat them. And did I, I don't even think I cooled this down. I wanted this at 290, goodness. Okay, 290, that'll cool down in just a moment. Okay, preheated. Then, in the meantime, I can get these positioned. I wanted them to be kind of bottom right justified. I thought that'd be really pretty, just like that. Okay, and that Iron-on has a sticky back, so it's nice that you can just place it where you want. And that's not quite straight. And no, it'll stay there until you heat it on. Okay, how does that look? I think that's very cute. Okay, so there we go. 
Now, this is a perfect example of when I do not think it's going to take as much time as the directions say. So it does say 294, 30 seconds, but I'm really gonna monitor my project here. We're close enough, really. And we're gonna try 15 seconds. It really doesn't take much. All right, there we go. Perfect. And let's let these cool down. Now, in the meantime, I'm gonna put these face down on my mat to get that nice and cold. And I'll bring back this project. Now, I gave this a good long while. I only have one little spot there, but that is much better than the last time I attempted it. So I will just place this iron-on liner right back on there. Oops, let's place it all the way over there. That way I don't accidentally get anything, but I'll focus on the right side. Well, no, I'm gonna place it all the way over there. It's just gonna take a second. And that's another thing about crafting in bulk when you have a lot of stuff to do. Make sure you set things to the side and continue them in a little bit. Like this one, it needed some time. So set things to the side. Don't waste your time, you know, waiting for things to cool or fussing over something. Oh, again, that's done though. Isn't that cute? Um, work really smart so that you're not just sitting around waiting for things, right? We don't want to just wait for paint to dry. Super cute. I love that idea. Okay, now these are completely cool. Again, I did only 15 seconds and those are completely done. Ooh, be careful. Be careful because I just ripped a little bit of that. Okay, so this time around, of course I should have known that, that being paper and all, but this time around I'm gonna go nice and slow, that way it doesn't rip and that was much better. Okay, so now some irons do not have that sticky liner so you wouldn't have that problem, but here we go. So I will just get this all opened up. There we go. <laughs> I don't want to be a little difficult, but there we are. And then you have a really nice size little box for little candies or whatever you like to put in there for the holidays. I think that's super, super cute. Then you can add a little ribbon. Perfect idea, especially for mass produced gifts. Okay, I totally fibbed. I'm going to take a quick break from iron-on. Sometimes I like to just switch it up for a little bit. I'm going to do this really nice little can holder. These are for the skinny cans. I got this on Amazon. It is the brand Mars, I would, I guess, pronounce that. And before I do anything, I will add some rubbing alcohol to the front. Okay, wash that off. Really nice. And then I just used a couple of fonts and I made a really cute little design here. And I like to pair more of a block font with a script font. I think it's super cute. And this just says Lake Mom. How cute. Now again, I'm gonna do my best to make sure I link all of the designs I use and that includes the fonts. But you know, if I do forget anything, just please be mindful and graceful when asking me to provide that. This is a very, very um, big and overwhelming video to make. I could absolutely do this a lot easier if I was just doing it on my own time, but I love to bring stuff like this to you so you can be inspired. But knowing that, just be mindful when, I guess I would say mindful when letting me know if I've forgotten something because just know that I am working my hardest all the time to make sure that that supply list is extremely thorough. Okay, so how cute is that? There is the final look. Okay, love that. Oh, I'm really missing my transfer tape though. I really need to reorder that. I will say though, this hasn't been awful to use and it's making me feel good that, because I don't want to waste things, it's making me feel good that I'm actually using it because when you see my new space and I'm going to take you on a journey of unboxing my craft room right now it is a complete mess it's um, a little overwhelming but my goal this year as I am you know moving into a new space after over three years of crafting I think I'm gonna be much more mindful about you know buying the things that I need, and I know I've said that before because last year I shopped my craft space, but 
more intentional also about not you know necessarily getting things in bulk just crafting with what I need and letting that be it okay again burnishing the front but also the back and then peeling it away upside down if you will I love how these two fonts worked together I think that is really um, appealing to the eye I think this is so fun okay so this says of course lake mom and I think that looks great okay I'll lay that down go to the sides but then go back through with my scraper and really burnish that down okay so these are really fun gift ideas you could also take it a step further and fill them with fun candies or whatnot and it could essentially be you know like your gift bag if you will which is really fun and there we go now I'll save this piece for a little bit later I'm sure we'll need that size but isn't that fun I think that is so cute I love how that turned out and another fun little gift idea okay I actually saw this at Dollar Tree I was so excited because it is more for soup look how nice and big that is I mean if you wanted to have your coffee in that go for it you would not hear any judgment from me again rubbing alcohol on the top of that but I loved this for a soup cup so I'm going to make a fun little gift for a soup lover and I have a little extra here but I'm not gonna bother cutting that off because it's not enough for me to work with and it might be enough for you to work with so just be mindful of that the way that I craft I know after a while, right, um, what things I end up repurposing and what things end up being a little too small. So for me, I know that's okay to toss. I probably won't go back and use that. Okay, so this is so cute. This says hug in a mug. And honestly, this would be a very cute phrase for coffee, but I also think as a soup lover myself, soup is an absolute hug in a mug especially because traditionally not traditionally I shouldn't say that but um, often we grab for soup when we need comfort right or when we're not feeling very well in fact when I'm done tonight I have some soup that I'm going to have grab my Kindle and just veg out okay so hug in a mug, isn't that cute? And I'm gonna use that same transfer tape that I just used for my last one. So I can use my supplies over and over. Always keeping those crafting costs down. Okay, and then that rubbing alcohol is plenty dry. There we go. Oop. That dot to our eye and good to go. Okay, now I think I'm in a center, um, well, is it kind of supposed to be tilted? I like it like this, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, there we go, hug in a mug, super cute, and burnish, and of course, peel away. Another fun gift idea, even better, this blank was from Dollar Tree, so very affordable. We all have to admit, this time of year gets very expensive, so when you can, Grab some more affordable blanks and get them personalized. It's all the better. And it's much more special. Once again, I found these really neat little blanks at um, Hobby Lobby and they're ready to go, right? Grab and go. And I mentioned before that that is a wonderful thing when you have a lot of gifts to do or if you're in a pinch and in a hurry, right? Sometimes we have last minute gifts. So I have this cute little file I'm going to make this for my mom for her craft room. I think she'll love it. She always texts me or calls me when she gets a crafting day because that doesn't happen very often for her. She's super busy, but I thought it'd be fun to have just a little decor for her craft room because she certainly loves a day when she can have some coffee and some quiet and get some crafts done. She does some awesome crafts. So I thought this was a adorable and appropriate sign for her. I need a little coffee and a lot of crafting. And honestly, who doesn't, right? And selecting all of those little middle pieces out. And we are good to go. 
Okay, one thing I don't like about this transfer tape, it is really hard to get started. So I will be linking my favorite transfer tape down below because I honestly think it simply works better. And I'm never going to share anything other than um, what I truly love for you, respectively. So you'll find my preferred transfer tape instead of this down below. Okay, laying this right on over and same process of burnishing. This makes me want to kind of think through craft room decor for my own new craft space. That's gonna be so fun. But I will be intentional about taking you on a little behind the scenes journey as I am <laughs> getting things unpacked as we're getting things built getting things put into place. I think that would be a really fun thing to share and have you come along with. So look out for that. Okay. And it goes without saying that will definitely be coming after the new year. After this video, it's time to relax with my family and enjoy Christmas. Okay, that's nice and down. Now, I want to be very careful not to scratch this because I have a feeling it would scratch super easily. In fact, I think I'm going to have more control from below. There we go. And, oh, that looks so nice with the black. Looks like something that you would buy. Okay. Pull that off. And there is a little homemade sign. Isn't that fun? It looks like you would have bought it. I love it. Okay, so I have pre-weeded these because they were a little intricate, but I found these at Target, um, gosh, were they a couple years ago? So you might not find this, but you can find absolutely similar items like this at any craft store, especially during the holiday season, but they're two little boxes. I love dressing these up for gift giving. It's just a no-brainer. It makes it fun. So on this small one, I'm just going to put this cute little Christmas tree, something really simple. Oops, it's getting stuck there. And I'm going to off center it and just place it right down in the bottom right. I think that'll be so pretty, just like this. It's always fun to think through also your gift giving as well as you know the crafts that you make but also how you're going to present them so a couple examples i've given you tonight of course were the being careful again this is more of a papery surface you could use paper transfer tape if you'd like but this is working just fine if you're being mindful and then i need to grab just this little piece that didn't get off the liner and there's one little box how cute is that and then i just kind of edited this file. I've made a sign with this file before and it has more um, little lines coming from the bottom too, but I edited it so it could be more of a square design and it turned out super cute. So again, designs will be linked down below. So let's put this on the next little box. So we have done those little boxes that you can put candy in. We've also done, oh, that's cute. Um, very sweet. We've also done these boxes and then pretty soon we're gonna do some tags. Okay, that looks great. Again, being very mindful that we don't rip the box. There we go. Okay, so what a way to dress up your gift giving a little bit. I think that makes it a little bit more exciting and I love that. So some more inspiration of not only am I sharing how you can make gifts, but also how to present them. Recently, I did a really cute shirt that said, Raising Tiny Disciples. And I got so many compliments on it, both from all of you, but also in real life when I was wearing it around. So I'm gonna make this as a gift. It's such a cute little design and the meaning is just so cute as well and meaningful. So I'm gonna weave this real quick and we're gonna put this on this really fun shirt from Hobby Lobby. It's one of those little crop shirts. So it stops a little early right here, super fun. And I like this design for this type of shirt because it's nice and short. We could disagree of course, but I find that 
more short designs on more short shirts is a little bit more uh, appealing to the eye. So you can do whatever, but I like looking for designs like this um, when doing something that's more of a crop. All right, and as always, grab my little heat mat here. Get this all positioned. Then a quick little preheat. Again, I did pre-wash this shirt, so it's also just you know straightening it out, but it is also making sure that there's no moisture in the garment, that it did truly dry from the dryer. That way, the iron-on is successful when laying down. Okay. Or if you live in a humid climate that kind of traps moisture in garments, then that's another reason why you want to preheat. Okay, one little bee I need to weed out here. There you go. Amazing tiny sips. Okay, I love that. I think that looks good, just like so. Let's see, left to right. I think it needs to come to the left. Okay. And we're going to go for it. Okay. Press that on. I'm going to go at an angle here. That way I get more of my heat press. Okay. Move that over. And again, let it cool down. All right. There we go. And another fun little gift. Another thing that I love to do are garden flags, and I just pre-press that to get all of the wrinkles out. And I have a really fun design here that I'll need to press in sections. I had to use my 12 by 24 mat in order to cut this out, but if you didn't have a 12 by 24 mat, you could just cut this out in sections and then just put your pieces on your project individually. And I'll show kind of more of a visual of that in a moment, but saves you from having to go buy a mat. Usually I don't use my 12 by 24 mat very often, so um, if you're not wanting to invest in one because you don't think you'll use it too much, then this will be another way that you can still do large images. This file is so well done. It says, welcome to my happy place, but it has a variety of little fonts, and I don't have font information because this is a pre-made SVG, but, oops, is this not going to want to weed out? Looks like it didn't cut. Ooh, it didn't cut super well there. Hold on, let's make sure that the rest did. Might have to do a little surgery, which is okay. Let's see. It's not wanting to pull away from the A, so I can either be super gentle or I can run a true control knife. I'm gonna do with the knife in a moment. So I'll show you how to do that if you get a little shallow cut area. It rarely happens. I think this has only happened maybe two times for me since I begin crafting with a Cricut. And I mean when it does like an entire design, but then one section isn't very good. That's what I mean by um, it only happening a couple times for me. Okay, get these little extra pieces off. When doing garden flags, I wanna share an idea that my mom did. She did a whole yearly set of garden flags. So she made one for every month of the year as a gift. And I thought that was such a great idea. Um, I thought it was just really creative and brilliant and wouldn't you love to receive something like that to where you have everything done for you. You just pull out the coordinating garden flag. So I'm just following that little cut line very lightly with my true control knife and then I'll see if that was enough to, yep. Okay, so you can do that if you have a little shallow cut in an area. It's so interesting. Maybe it wasn't that my iron-on was laid you know, as nicely in that area on my mat, that can happen too. Okay, so I did pre-press my garden flag, so now I can just put this on here, and of course I will press this in little sections. Now, when I was talking about avoiding the 12 by 24 mat, what you could do is, now some files will let you do this, some files may not, but if your file allows you to detach, then you could cut out the welcome, you could cut out, well, you could honestly cut out welcome to my happy, and then you could cut out place separately, and then just place that on manually as you're doing it. So again, some of your cut files will allow you to do that just based on how the creator has created the file, and if you can 
detach them and cut them in sections, then that will avoid the larger mat. Okay, and then I'm just going to, oh goodness. Oh no, that's fine. Oh, I thought that that was a piece. It looks like it's part of the E. I thought I had not um, weeded out a certain part of it. So I think we're good though. Okay, and then of course, I'll just pull this up on my mat and do the bottom. Okay, and as always, let's cool it down and peel off the liner. Okay, the top part naturally had longer to cool because I pressed it first. Oh, that laid down effortlessly. Oh my word, I'm so happy with that. And easy peasy. You could absolutely make these in bulk. And again, if you wanted to do my mom's idea and give a collection of 12 where you give one for each month of the year, I think that is a beautiful idea as well. I love giving candles as a gift. I think they are lovely to give, lovely to receive. Let's see if this is going to be enough. Ooh, I might have to manually put a couple. Ooh, that's not going to be enough in the slightest. Let's see if I can naturally get that off very nicely. But instead of just giving the candle, I thought it'd be nice to make a little tray to accompany it to put right on the top. Now, I believe I got this tray at the Target dollar spot, and I'm not quite sure what season I purchased it in, and I actually shouldn't call it a tray. It's more along the lines of a little riser, but I love these for putting either candles on or other little trinkets in a kitchen area or whatnot. So just another way to kind of elevate your gift, make it a little bit more personalized. And oh my word, this transfer tape does not want to come apart. Goodness, okay, ordering mine immediately. So another thing I thought through when doing this design, or I didn't do this design, but when looking for designs to do is I wanted to have something that focused on the perimeter. And this is an example of where you would want to cut out to save some vinyl. So I know I use a lot of white. In fact, earlier when we did that tiny little Christmas tree for the little red box, that's where I cut that out of. I always am thinking of ways to put other designs within design so I can use the most of my vinyl. And you can do that by just moving things around on your mat in the mat preview screen. Okay, so again, going back to kind of my thought process on searching for a design for something like this, I like to get something that focuses on the perimeter. That way I can place the candle in the middle. It's not sitting on words or the focal point of the design because then that kind of is just kind of frustrating or kind of lacks purpose. Okay, so I'll do the back really quickly and get this placed on. All right. Gonna hover that over where I think would look good, and voila. Okay, and burnish and peel. Oops. Always keep your scraper handy, especially if you are starting to craft in a rush like I do sometimes. It's easier to slow down and do it right the first time. Actually, I think it's also the wood here. Um, it's gonna lay down just fine, but sometimes it just takes a little bit more, a little bit more help. And patience, a little help and patience. There we are, and all done. Isn't that nice? It's simple, it's nice. You can again have the additional gift of the candle, and these are relatively inexpensive when you find them. You can find them at craft stores, and I think it's a very nice little gift. While I have this larger piece of transfer tape, I'm going to do this cute little chalkboard. I'm going to make a little coffee chalkboard for a friend who adores coffee. People who adore coffee are my type of friends. <laughs> I love a good cup of coffee. Okay, so let's get this little thing off. Now, absolutely make sure you do put loving alcohol on here, especially since it's been sitting at the store, you wanna make sure that you get all of the dust and grime, any oils, all of that. So now as I am putting the rubbing alcohol on, however, ooh, that's kind of making a little mess. So maybe don't 
necessarily, it's kind of making the chalkboard part come off. Let me see if once I put the design on, if it kind of, I might have ruined that. But I didn't ruin it in the, in the fact that um, now you know. And sometimes I appreciate that just as much when I do something and it doesn't necessarily work out for me, but it prevents all of you from repeating the mistake. So well worth the mistake on my end if it helps you out. Okay, teeny tiny little pieces at the bottom here. So I wanna be very mindful to take my time. Okay. Okay, so super cute, but I had to take my time at the bottom because it is just so intricate. And I, in the end, I will repurchase this sign on my next trip to Hobby Lobby um, and redo this as my gift. But I'm gonna finish it so that you get an idea of the finished product. And also note not to do any rubbing alcohol on the surface. You probably could just do like a damp cloth, I'm thinking would be just fine. Um, maybe just test it in the corner because you do want to get, you know, the dust off of it. They do kind of get a little dusty sitting there on the shelf. Okay, and then I'll just reuse this larger piece. I'll trim it down because I need it to fit within this little frame. Okay. And sometimes if you have too much transfer tape, it just, it, it doesn't help anything, right? It's just too much, but I'll keep this piece. Okay, burnish the top and bottom. And what I mean um, with transfer tape being too much is if you have too much around the edges, it can just make it mess with your alignment a little bit. Okay, so I might even trim this little side piece off and we should be good to go. Again, yes, I am going to redo this, but let's give you an idea of, this isn't too much vinyl to recut, so I'm okay sacrificing it. Okay, now this file did also have, I love how that looks, it did have a rectangular border around it and all I did was I um, hid it in the layers panel. So I just clicked the little eye in the layers panel to hide that portion. If you need little tutorials about design space and how to get things create in design space. I have years of tutorials like that. And I also have a design space playlist. So if you go to my channel page and look at my playlist, you'll see design space lessons. And those videos will be where you want to focus on to learn more about the software. Okay. So there that is. It actually does take some of the distraction away from the little whoopsie once you get it on there. So it's actually not too awful, but I definitely will redo it for gift giving. But I love how that looks. It's really fun. Very nice for a coffee lover. Okay, I want to give a tip on difficult designs to weed, whether it's because they are small or because the font that you are cutting out is a little bit more delicate. But what I like to do when I am facing a design that is a little bit more thin and intricate is that is when I bring out the Smart Vinyl. The Smart Vinyl is a little bit more thicker naturally than regular vinyl. And the reason is because it is designed to do matless cutting where you don't have to put it on a mat. You can just send it through the machine. You can do it on the Joy machines. You can also do it on the Explore Air 3, I believe. Um, but if you don't have either of those machines, you can use this material and just place it on a regular cutting mat. You can still absolutely do that. It's not only for matless cutting, but because of its additional thickness, it really helps when you have more fine designs because it's a little bit more durable when you're weeding it. So if you are kind of struggling with something that's either small or intricate, Try cutting it out with some smart vinyl and see if that helps you at all. Okay, I got a little excited about getting that weeded. Sorry for the sniffles. Okay, there we go. Definitely want to do the rubbing alcohol. And with this, now I didn't burnish the back, which I should. This is, because it's so thick, it can be a little bit tricky to get off of the carrier sheet. And it does have its own corresponding transfer tape. So using that definitely helps. I'm gonna use this regular transfer tape right now just because I have it. 
but also using a fresh piece will help with this particular product as well. But it's doable, you just have to kind of take your time a little bit. Okay, but as you can see, it's easy to keep the little dots to the eyes and everything is doing really well. So just a tip for when you're given trickier designs. Okay, okay, there we go. And because that's all washed, this wants to be a stinker, I'll just do that. I'm gonna make this for one of my friends. I know she'll love it. This would be really fun. These are, um, pardon me, I forgot to mention, the little hexagon ceramic with the hanger is from Dollar Tree. I think these would be really nice Bible study gifts. Um, now again, because you would be crafting in bulk if you had a study group, this would be a good option because you could purchase these fairly inexpensively and then just put a really nice little vinyl decal on them. So very cute. I love how this turned out. I love the uniqueness of the shape. And again, those are from Dollar Tree. Okay, you've seen me do this particular piece once before, probably within my first year of crafting. And I made really neat craft room decor where I held my Cricut pens in this little hanger pot, which is really neat. I found this at Hobby Lobby and I love this idea because it makes it just a little bit more fun and cozy in terms of organizing a craft space. It's something that's unique. One thing that you can do is you can stuff the bottom with paper towels. That way your pens don't sink down into the bottom and instead kind of stick out the top. But I thought I would do this once again for my mom for her craft space so that she had some fun craft room decor for organizing. So I have a cute little design here and I think I did get a really interesting batch of Oracle vinyl. Um, my last roll at least of the black because it is extremely testy to weed and i've never had that problem before so naturally things happen this isn't something that i get fussy about because nothing is perfect so i probably just got a roll that didn't quite meet um the standard but it just means you have to take a little bit more time and celebrate when you finally cut the last of the roll because <laughs> then you can buy something new so I will always purchase this brand. Again, I'll link everything that I use down below, but every once in a while, you know, things happen. Okay, so this file says I can totally make that. And I'm making this for my mom because we love craft shopping together, especially with doing Cricut things. And um, we're always at craft stores saying, oh, we could totally make that. So it's definitely a cute and personal gift for her. And it's fun when you see things that you can recreate because not only can you personalize it, maybe you want to do it in a different color or font or style, but usually you can do it a tad bit cheaper as well. So now that's not all the time, especially if you watch my card making tutorials. There's nothing like a good $40 card because listen, <laughs> making cards is definitely not to save money, but you know, it's the process that counts. It's the creating, it's bringing your heart into it and getting creative time. And in my case, getting alone time and me time to create that, even though crafting sometimes can be a little bit more expensive than just purchasing something, it can be well worth it because of the, the things that it does for me and for others. So those are things to keep in mind too. All right, let me trim down this and let's see, burnish this. All right, and as always, let's peel from the back. And, oh, I love that. That looks great. Okay, now this is a rounded surface, so I'm just going to be mindful to kind of lay this down in sections, okay? I also should have put some little relief cuts in my transfer tape just to help lay that down. And if I have to go back through and, you know, help little pieces lay down, then that is just the nature of the game. I'm gonna put a little relief cut here. That way the transfer tape can take the shape of the cup a little bit, there we go, or the pot, 
whatever you want to call it. Okay, that looks awesome. I'm feeling good about that. I might need to come and do something with the eye looks good. That looks good. Maybe this C. Okay, let's burnish that down and then it's one step at a time. We'll see what we need to do. But I think we might have done it just about perfectly the first time. Oh, that looks so good. Now, if you need help learning how to put vinyl on curved surfaces, just look for that tutorial from me. I give tips on how to do that with the relief cuts. It makes it so much easier, but isn't that cute? I love that. You can hang it in your craft room. You can put little craft supplies in there. Even if you didn't want to do, you know, pens, you could do scissors and things like that. I think that's so cute. All right. Hopefully mom's not watching this, but if you are, act surprised. Okay, let's do a couple little tags. Now, I'm not gonna worry about rubbing alcohol on these little acrylic tags because as you can see, I am just now removing a liner from them. So they'll be nice and clean, no worries. But I will very gently, so I don't scratch the acrylic, remove the liner from these. Now, I do not remember where I purchased these. It may have been Hobby Lobby, most likely it was. You can find these just about anywhere, any craft store, especially during the Christmas season. Okay, there we go. Now, I kind of edited a little file. I think it had a little wreath around it, but this said joy to the world. And I loved the look of it and I thought it would be so pretty as a gift tag. Of course, you could do to and from and do personalizations with your vinyl. But sometimes I think it's super nice just to do something a little bit more um, reusable, I guess. Unless you're going to have people just give you your tags back at the end of the at the end of the holiday, which hey, that is working smart. But that way, when you give this, they at the next holiday can use it as well as a gift tag. So that's fun too. But I love a good personalized gift tag as well. It's so classy and so special so special okay so again joy to the world times two i think i'll do these one at a time well can i oh i sure can let's do that okay then i can trim them apart after i get these burnished okay front and back as always and then we have cute little tags okay this is where i'm going to trim them apart and there we go okay so the first one, like that, very nice. Just for good measure, we can do that, but probably just with your hands is plenty of burnishing. And there is a little tag. Isn't that cute? I really like that. Very cute, very fun. And again, run with this in any direction because the ideas for this would be endless. Okay. Taking a moment to tidy up for just a moment, but I wanted to make a little snowflake ornament collection. I thought it would be super cute. And I'm probably not going to worry about washing these. They look like they're just fine from the packaging. But I found these at Michael's. Aren't these beautiful? I'm gonna be careful with them, of course. But I also have a little patterned vinyl, and I have a fun little SVG collection that I purchased with a variety of snowflakes because I thought it would be super pretty to have a little collection but have each of them be different. So I'm going to try to weave this all together. I think that would be the easiest. And this is where bringing out the little magnet for the mat is really helpful because so it will help just keep things steady as I finish up the end. Okay, and only a couple of snowflakes actually have little middle areas that need attention. So this one, again, move this around, and then this one. Okay, there we go. I love a good snowflake collection. I think they're so pretty and so unique. Okay, love that. That's a pretty pattern vinyl too. This is a Cricut 
patterned vinyl. This is a removable. Don't worry about removable, especially for a project like this that is not drinkware. It's not going to get wet. It'll be absolutely fine. Okay, I'm going to combine some transfer tape so that I can try to do all of this in one fell swoop. So what I'll do is I'm going to do this and probably this extra piece. There we go. That way. I like doing it this way because you can do all of your burnishing at once instead of individually. It makes it a lot quicker. So do all of your burnishing, then cut them apart, and it just saved a little bit of time for you. Okay, so this is where you trim them apart before they get all sticky. Okay, and then you can individually peel them off the backer and apply them. All right, so now, individually, just peel these off, being gentle because snowflakes, they can be kind of tricky just because they have little legs going in all directions. So you wanna be careful that you don't rip anything, but then you can create all your little unique snowflakes on each ornament. And I think it's gonna be a beautiful collection in the end. And even if you didn't want to give this as one collection to one person, these would be fun to place around a bottle of wine. Say if you're doing neighbor gifts, um, that would be a really cute idea to gift a little ornament as well as a little holiday cheer. Now, of course, if you wanted to reuse the same single piece of transfer tape for all of them, you absolutely can. But in situations like this, when you have so many to do, so many crafts back to back. I already had used this transfer tape one time before, so I'm okay with retiring it after this craft. So what a pretty little collection. I think those turned out beautiful. Again, multiple ways that you could gift this. I think it'd be pretty to do in a collection, but again, if you wanted to pass these out individually, then you could do that as well. All right, there's another fun idea. Picture frames are always a fun idea. They're great grandparent gifts, and they are really fun to apply vinyl to because then once you place the picture behind it, it really pops on the little glass. Now, I'm not sure, this is from Dollar Tree, but, so I don't know if that is glass or plastic, but what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to worry about putting any, rubbing alcohol on that because I just unwrapped it. So we should be good to go. And I just used a fun little font, typed out love you, and as simple as that, right? Don't overcomplicate it, simple as that. Okay, there we go. And imagine a picture behind this, but these are really fun to just place right on top. Now, so many people end up telling me, you should mirror it and put it behind the glass so that it's more protected. You can do that. There are several reasons why I don't do that. I've spoken to it repeatedly on my channel, but know that if that is the way you prefer to do it, go for it. I think it gives more dimension to put it on top. Plus when you mirror it and put it behind, you have to be very mindful not to get bubbles in between your glass and your vinyl because now you have that barrier between the two. So know those two things, but know that you also can do it that way as well there is another fun little gift idea. All right, I hope you were super inspired. Sorry about the stuffy nose throughout the second half of the video, but you could imagine with all of the change and the stress that goes along with moving a craft room and moving a family, you're bound to get sick. And I really wanted to be able to finish this video for you. So sniffles and all, we got everything done. Now it's time to wrap. Let me know which one was your favorite, what you're going to try to recreate this year. And as always, have a beautiful holiday season. Merry, Merry Christmas. Thanks for being here this year. And I can't wait to share all of the fun things that are coming up in 2024. I feel like this is going to be such a great year. A year ago, I didn't even know we would be moving. And so this year, it's just going to be a really fun journey. All right, I'll see you soon. Merry Christmas.